What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today, of course, is the final day before Team of the Year. Um, Project Team of the Year for me didn't last long. We started just two days ago. We've, we've achieved a nice amount in that time. We've got our club into a, a place of decency in that time. Um, but I'll be perfectly honest, I kind of already got bored of doing it. Like, I'm, I'm going to continue the grind with the consumables. Uh, my plan was to have 7 million coins liquid by team of the year. Um, and I could still do that, but it would be stupid. I was chatting to stream about it last night and, you know, we was like, okay, I was going to start going through and selling, um, you know, all of my big cards, basically. Uh, the, I have like a Cavani and a Dybala. We got loads of pages and informs and... I've got a few like team of the year nominee cards, which some people think might be needed for SBCs. So if they are great, I'll either use those if the SBC works for me or I'll sell them if they bang in price or I'll just sell them if they're not needed. Right. Um, but after we've got like the first page of players or the first 10 pages of players with special cards and such, I've got like all of this stuff here. De Gea Lewandowski that I just picked up today. Uh, I went and bought a few of the big buying cards. Uh, there was some rumors of a Byron SBC being the first one out tomorrow, which means probably the leaked team of the year, or sorry, flashback Manuel Neuer team of the year version is probably coming tomorrow. Who knows how much, how expensive a 95 or a 94 rated goalkeeper is going to be as an SBC. Um, but we've got like Kuli Bali, Dybala, Cavani. And I was going to sell all of these now, but the, the high-end market is so low because there is literally nothing to do on the game right now. Um, so because the market is so low, it would be idiotic of me to start selling these items now. I would miss out on so many coins. So we're just going to hold on to these items until they're needed, until they're useful. And in fact, I might go and uh, stock my club up. I don't have too many 83s, as you can see there. We've literally just got uh, six 83s in the entire, or seven 83s in the entire club. Uh, we don't have like too many 84s either. So I'm probably going to go and spend some time just picking up some 83s, 84s, making sure I've got one of everything so I can either use them if a good SBT comes out or sell them if uh, we can make the uh, easy coins on them. So that's why I'm not going to have 7 million coins right away. Uh, one of the other reasons for that is because obviously we have heavily invested in the consumables and the chem styles. Um, we're at a point now where I've cleared out everything. So all I've got is the dead eyes, the hawks and the anchors. I am going to go invest invest some more coins in these as well. Um, and then everything else that you see there is untradeable, which is why it's after those ones. But every, we've, got, we've got a fair few untradeable chem styles, which is nice. But I've got rid of all chem styles. Um, so I'm working on a few other things right now. Position modifiers, fitness cards, contracts and such, um, which we're in a pretty decent spot for. Um, manager leagues, I've got what I want left as well. Uh, they're not really selling. I tried once to sell them. They're not really going contracts we're down to really low amounts of contracts i've done a good job of getting rid of those and fitness we still got a lot of so they're they're the ones because they there's the most of these these are the ones i'm kind of just leaving till last uh healing cards we don't have anything left so that's literally where we are and even for position modifiers i'm getting through them um we're not we, we don't have like a huge amounts left anymore we've got some left but um, obviously we're going to be investing in some of those as well uh, but you'll see from the trade pole here as well I don't have too many items left on the trade pole now because I want to show you guys what we're doing with the trade pole. Um, but that's where we're at with that. So, yeah, I won't have seven mil coins initially, but hopefully the SBCs and Team of the Year, when it starts, will kickstart my sale of players. And that's where the coins will come in. And hopefully it will also kickstart the sale of the consumables. You know, there's no point. I don't even know what anchors are selling for right now, but there's no point me selling the anchors now. Uh, because I, I bought all of them for the reason, you know, for uh, basically the the growth of them. You know, they're 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 cards that I want to sit on and wait until they're worth like three and a half to four and a half k. I bought them at twenty five hundred. Looks like they're still about twenty five hundred. So you know, worst case scenario, I siphon them off to lazy buyers for three thousand, three thousand two hundred. Best case scenario, EA release, you know, Marcelo flashback anchor suits him perfectly. They bang up to like four and a half, five k make a killing right that's that's the plan um so we're going to be working on that on purchasing and investing these coins in spite of the fact that i want more coins um i'm going to take the the big risk on consumables on certain consumables um so for today's episode there is no gameplay um but i've, I've i'm up to 69 packs now i thought i was going to be on more packs as well but i decided to just sell um all of 
the league SPC cards instead of doing the pack here or there like I was going to. I ultimately, I just, I prefer coins. I just want coins more than anything. And I don't know why I opened this. Like my, the whole point was me to talk about this. But what we can do during team of the year is we could just do gold pack method. So when an SPC comes out that makes cards valuable, we obviously can sell them. Uh, and then in the meantime, you know, if SBCs come out, like for example, if a Premier League uh upgrade SBC comes out that requires 11 Premier League players then I'll go and sell all my Premier League players right happy days um this card looks like he's going for a bit right now jeez um so yeah that that's how we're going to make our coins and then I'm happy more than happy to really engage um with gold pack method to a keep flooding our club back up with items and b um to try and pack a team of the year um so what we're doing right now i've got some comments from the comment section and i'm going to use those comments to kind of take me through um take me through the club and show you guys what we've got going on as you can tell by the title of the video obviously it's about a thousand wins we hit one thousand wins on the account um 410 of those wins are from draft it just really goes to show how much draft i've been playing this year and again it, you know to reiterate it's crazy for me the difference between this account this year and this account last year. This time last year, I just about sold Hullet. We had like six or seven million coins. We had a hundred and some odd packs stacked up and we had a full club. This year, I've got about three and a half million coins and we've got a full club and I, I don't have a hundred odd packs stacked. So because I've spent way more time playing, I've not seen the benefits of grinding the, you know, the club management side of things rather than calling it menus. Let's call it club management. Um, I've not spent the time doing that. And uh, that's had an adverse impact on my account. Um, so the first comment that we've got as I send all these contracts up is from uh, Jamie McIntosh. He says, would you rather a really difficult objective for a good team of the year player or an easy objective, but an average player? So if I had to pick one for purely selfish reasons, the answer would be I would like a really difficult objective for a good team of the year player or a really high end player. Uh, for example, if Manuel Neuer does get a flashback tomorrow, I would love it to be accompanied by a flashback Casillas that's also like a 94 rated and is an objective player and requires some extensive, uh, you know, time into the game. But what we talked about on stream and we have talked about and covered in video a fair few times as well is that EA seem to be catering with a lot of like easy to semi-difficult things to play for that are good but never great cards or they seem to be catering for SBCs that are very, very good, but very, very expensive that cater towards pay to win kind of players. And they just don't seem to be catering anything towards hardcore grinder players. And so although my answer would be, I would rather a good team of the year player that's very, very difficult to get. The, the truth of the matter is, is that EA should be providing things for all types of players. Having, you know, we've, we've discussed it so many times before, having of three or four really high-end players that take 150 to 200 hours worth of game time to get doesn't take away from the experience of the casuals because they can't compete with the hardcores anyway, whether or not you're a hardcore grinder that's got a team like mine or FIFA point spender, th those guys can't compete anyway. So, you know, it, it would just be nice if EA put that sort of stuff in. And I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful that team of the year is a time where they decide to do that, you know, where team of the year, like, okay, here's 10 milestones or 20 milestones. Here's like a season, uh, a new season that's going to contain loads of absolutely incredible things. And, and here's, um, you know, some unbelievable SBCs, some of them really high end, but really expensive. And some of them good players, good tier one players, but relatively cheap. You know, it would be great if we just had an absolute mass of content so that everybody's happy. I don't understand why not. Uh, the next comment is from uh, Mahamud, Maham, Mahmoud, beg your pardon, uh, El Arif. He says, hey, Nep, can you please make a video on the useful skill moves in FIFA 20? You talked about some running moves last episode and others since. I don't feel like I'm utilizing my five-star skillers to their full potential. And absolutely I can, yeah. So it will probably not happen during team of the year week. Um, but afterwards, what, what I'll need to do as well is I'll need to get some gameplay clips of me using the skill moves in effective areas. It's one thing going into the arena and saying, hey, just do this and it works. It's another thing actually showing how it works in different game situations because like the step over power drive, which is literally where you do step overs and then press sprint and run in the same direction that you've been doing the step overs, 
is a really efficient move in certain areas and a really terrible move in certain areas you know if you use that move in the midfield you're just going to end up power driving into a defender or or you know a, a wide midfielder or something or if you use it in your own third you might power drive past that attacker but you're just going to drive into a midfielder and then they're just going to walk up and pick the ball off of you and nobody wants that so there's certain areas where it's utilized and then the stanky leg as we've become to call it and the elastico and reverse elastico they are super, super valuable skill moves in and around the edge of the box. They create so much space. I find them to be more valuable than the running fake shot. Uh, obviously, the running fake shot is one that we have used. And, you know, it is very good to create space. The problem with it is, is it causes separation between the player and the ball, whereas the stanky leg and the elastico don't cause separation between the player and the ball. So when you use a running fake shot, if the guy reads you, he could just step inside and, and basically walk away with the ball without even having to tackle you. That's not what you want. When you pop the Elastico specifically, you pop it so hard, you get to accelerate out so fast and so hard, and that they it's, it's undefendable. It's it's like the um, the body feint exit of FIFA. Of, I want to say FIFA 15, where the animation locked, and so even if you read it perfectly and tried to tackle, in fact, very similar to the La Croqueta of last year. Even if you read somebody's La Croqueta, you couldn't tackle them because the animation locked the ball to the to the player that did the La Croqueta. And it left uh, left people in a world where no matter what you did, read it well or not, you you literally just couldn't defend it, um, unless you like brought them down or put in a bang and slide tackle that was that timed the tackle with the end of the skill move, and that in itself was you know a, a heavy skill. Um, but definitely, so this this week, once team of the year comes out, when we get into a whole bunch of drafts and rivals and playing games for objectives and so on and so forth, we'll I'll make sure that I put aside some clips of me using the skill move in effective, efficient. Uh, scenarios um, so that I can show you guys kind of like a montage almost like of, of highlights of this is where you use it this is why it's successful and it's surprising how many people were like oh can you can you tell me how to do that because I do it enough like in the videos I thought people would have just picked up on it and would have uh, would have seen it um, but absolutely we can do that the next comment is from uh, a man um, much obviously uh, better than b man but he says why doesn't he swap his defense around since Mendy has a five-star weak foot so uh, somebody did actually respond to you in the comments and let you know what happens. But for the people that still ask that question and don't know the answer, here's the answer for you. Uh, let me just finish up listing these contracts. And then uh, once they sell, they're still selling good right now. It's only 8 p.m. at the time I'm listing these. So uh, we should be able to get rid of the bulk of those by the time the hour's up. Uh, this is my champ squad. I'm still 0-0 zero zero in champs. We'll get to that in a second. But I haven't played a single game of champs yet. Erlen Mendy starts at left back and Jordi Alba starts at right back because of the manager. Um, I get more chemistry using a Spanish Premier League manager because it gives De Bruyne up to eight and David Villa up to eight and uh, Jordi Alba up to seven rather than if I had these two switched around like this. Oh, not like this. If I had these two to start like this, it's still 100 team chem, but now Mendy is only on six and I can't improve his chemistry because... If I go uh, for the Spanish, well, I suppose I could go for the Spanish La Liga uh, manager, but I have the Spanish Premier League manager, uh, and that that's that's literally why I guess because I already have the manager there. Um, so that's why that's like that. But in game, and this is another comment that I get quite a lot, is how do you actually line up in game? So I have two formations. I I prefer the four triple two this year, but it is heavily reliant on very very pacey outside wingers. So in game, as you'll see, Jordi Alba actually is my left back. Ferland Mendy is my right back. The problem with this specific formation is De Bruyne is just too slow. So as an outside cam, he's not utilized the best. He's much, much better as an inside cam, right? So when I go into a game, I'll start in the 4 triple 2 If I'm up against a player who's decent and I'm like, look, I need to switch around. This isn't really working out for me. I need, the, uh, I need Zola out on that outside cam spot, but I also need a pacey striker. Uh, I'll switch into the 4-2-3-1. And uh, at that sense, again, Mendy is over on the right-hand side. Jordi Alba is my left back. De Bruyne goes in the middle behind David Villa. And then we have Politano and Zola as the wingers. And then, of course, because of our bench and how powerful our bench is, uh, we bring on like Kent or Jonathan. Uh, who else have we got? Pacey, Di Maria or Ben Yedder. Um, This Morales card, he was on, on the squad as well for a bit. But uh, we got basically some good uh, good options there. Which, uh, which is nice, you know, it's nice to nice to have those there. Uh, so that's why I, well, so basically I start like this, but I switch it in-game. So I do play Mendy on the right and Jordi Alba on the left. Uh, Kevin says, imagine doing all of this and not packing a team of the year. 
I'll be honest, I don't expect to pack a team of the year. Um, I've only spent two to three days grinding for towards team of the year. And, you know, obviously, if, t if the full team of the year isn't released until Thursday or Friday, we'll have another three or four days clearing out the club, getting our coins up, investing in the right chem styles, building up some more packs and, and so on and so forth. But the packs I have aren't particularly outrageous. A couple of jumbo gold packs, but they're not terrible either. A few jumbo premium gold packs, premium gold player packs, fair few of those. Some small gold, some small primes, some small rares, uh, lots of rare gold packs. I think I'm up to 550k packs now. Um, and then loads of like premium election player packs, prime election player packs, that sort of thing. Rare election player packs, all of those. Um, so based on last year, as I say, I had over 100 packs last year and I had a lot of 100k packs. I, I saved, I think, three weeks of uh, Foot Champs Gold 1 rewards or Elite rewards. Uh, I saved... Um, two ultimate packs from Division 1, Rank 1. I, I had loads of League SBC packs. I basically had built loads and loads of packs. Um, and I'd saved, like, a load of, like, Premier League player packs and stuff from a pre... I think from Black Friday would save loads of those as well. Um, so we had, like, 150 or so really, really strong packs. And I only packed two, Kante and Varane. Uh, and Varane actually came out of one of the packs that wasn't a saved pack, but was a crafted pack through Team of the Year. So out of all of my bulk saved packs last year, I actually only packed one Team of the Year. That was Kante, and that was from Rivals Rewards. Um, so I'm not expecting to pack anything from these packs that we've got. Uh, like, my aim is, I suppose, going to be working on building the squad, changing the squad, and fitting in some Team of the Year players. And on that note, um, there was... Uh, a message from uh, Ibra Kadabra Root. He says, I'm curious what team of the year cards you're going for if the leaks are correct. I'm in a similar spot to you, except I have 5 million coins and maybe 30 packs or so saved. I've got mostly liquid a solid, with a solid untradeable team. Red Hazard and Nangol and Politano, Villa, Rio, Pepe, etc. Um, main difference is I take untradeable rewards and I'm banking on upgrade packs and I'm hoping for a good SBC to put untradeables into. It's so hard to not spend coins when I see someone like Ronaldo on Xbox dip below 700k when it seems like Black Friday was around 1.1 to 1 million. This past month has been nuts. So in short, the price of the big four is mind-numbing. In fact, let's go on to Futbin. It's going to be much easier than checking on the market. Messi, who this year for the first year ever has remained uh, the most expensive gold card in the game. Look at that. On Xbox, he's now down to 790. PlayStation, 900. I don't know if these cards are going to go down during Team of the Year or if they're going to rebound during Team of the Year because of how low they are. So many people are saving packs and saving coins. I don't know if that gives more or less buying power, basically. Um, but this messy card, you know, depending on what, how you play him, what chem style you want, even with a dead eye, he goes up to a 97 rated cam. He is literally already ultimate tier end game for 790 or 910k. That's crazy, like like genuinely crazy. And then the fact that you can get could have got his player of the month for uh, 1.8 and the fact that his 96, uh, what is it, team of the group stage is 1.9 or 1.7 million. Again, it's just nuts. I mean, with a basic chem star, which is probably the best for this card, he's a 98.1 rated cam. He has got immaculate stats, like... You can't re other than physicals from his team of the year, you're not getting better than this, right? So the fact that Messi is so cheap is crazy. Ronaldo coming in super, super cheap as well. Um, 800k now, <laughs> unbelievable. 800k for Ronaldo. With how easy it is to make coins this year, you could genuinely sit there like just sniping, using sniping filters for like three days, four days and make 800k if you had lots of time, of course. Maybe two weeks or whatever if you don't have so much time. But to, to get a card like this, and and whatever he have done recently, they've made tanks like a bit bit better. Uh, so an engine on Ronaldo, great pace, great shooting, great dribbling with high agility, high reactions, ball control and dribbling, high composure, good passing. Once again, with the five star skill moves, this is now an unbelievable end like ultimate tier player for seven to eight hundred k. You then look at Mbappe. Um, now, of course, Ronaldo's like 94, a million coins for his left wing card, or what is it, 1.2 million for his 94 striker. Um, but Mbappe, uh, his gold comes in at 638k or 560k. And once again, that is just outrageous. A sniper chem style on him. His shot power is not ideal, but his finishing, positioning, pace, dribbling, brilliant. Five star, four star, brilliant. His stamina is great. He has, uh, in terms of traits, 
load up for me uh, outside the foot shot flare and finesse shot which means regardless of what this says for, for curve he actually has 99 curve on his shooting which is great and uh, you know it's just again one of those cards where it's like holy crap this card is so good and so cheap and then for me the best and most surprising of the bunch is neymar the fact that his base gold card is 680 on playstation and 560 on xbox he's five star five star which is unbelievably valuable in this game um with a dead eye he gets crazy stats with a basic he gets crazy stats with a sniper he gets crazy stats like there is so much you could do with this card with a maestro he goes up to a 95 rated cam for six seven well five six hundred thousand coins like with with these players being this cheap it's it's it like it makes me also uh going back to the the initial comment of uh, ibra there it makes me sit here and think i should just buy these four cards and two things make me think i should buy these cards the first thing that makes me think i should buy these cards is number one they are so cheap i i, I can't possibly believe that they will get cheaper going forwards right they, they are so far lower than what they've ever been in any year possible it's crazy the other thing that makes me think i should get these cards is there is a high chance now i'm not the market expert right but there is a high chance that these cards rebound heavily because for me for example i'm sitting here with three million coins and some packs a club stacks can easily get some coins if team of the year cards are too expensive or the card that i want doesn't come out or something i might be like okay let me go buy a neymar if loads of other people are in the same boat they're like i've got 1.6 million coins i've got a few packs saved i'm really hoping for a team of the year then they don't get a team of the year and they're like okay let me go and buy a messi and mbappe or a neymar and mbappe or ronaldo and a neymar or something like that all of a sudden people start panic buying these cards because they are the next best again it's like holy crap i can't afford a team of the years what's the next best on off offer oh it's an actual ronaldo messi Na neymar and mbappe let me go and buy those so i think if i actually went and bought those there's a high chance i could just make profit i could just sit on them have them spike back up to you know 10 15 20 percent profit make hundreds of thousands of coins off of them and then if they don't rise I've got four of the best players in the game for really, really, really cheap. I can afford all three of them right now with the coins that I've got. Um, so those are two things that make me think I should buy these cards. The things that make me think I shouldn't buy these cards is, number one, they could crash further. If EA do some good things over Team of the Year, release cards that are... If, if Team of the Year in general is cheap or as cheap as it was last year, um, if they release really cool flashbacks and SBCs, uh if they if they release really cool milestones and such if they upgrade the milestones that they've already put out and things these cards are now even more relevant because people would rather use cards they're attached to or that are untradeable so that makes me not want to purchase these cards like for example if politano gets upgraded to like a 91 or a 92 i'm not touching messi i'd much rather this politano card um you know if ea release a team of the year milestone player i, I don't want those team of the year attackers now i'd rather the milestone player and so on and so forth and then i also look at my team and I look at who's in it. Now, Zola and De Bruyne, I'll get rid of in a heartbeat. If De Bruyne, the leaked, if the rumors are true and De Bruyne gets a 97 team of the year, I want that team of the year, De Bruyne. So to answer the question again, which cards did I want? If the leaked team of the year is true, I definitely want Neymar. Not Sorry, not Neymar. I definitely want Mbappe. And I definitely want De Bruyne. I don't particularly care about Kante. I don't particularly care about uh, De Jong. I don't particularly care about Messi and I don't particularly care about Mane. So out of the attackers and midfielders, it will just be Mbappe and De Bruyne for me. And then in terms of the back line, like it's it's very, very tricky because Van Dijk would be amazing. So I might look to get Van Dijk and Trent or Van Dijk and Robertson. But for me, because I've got PK and Jordi Alba and this Jordi Alba is obviously rotated to the final Jordi Alba. This is already as good as team of the year level left back, especially considering he's going to get a few more upgrades, most probably, most likely. PK, other than his pace, has already been such an incredible player for us that I, I can only really see myself wanting two of the defenders. Um, and then obviously Allison in goal for the for the chemistry, but um, or whoever, David De Gea in goal for the chemistry or whatever. But at that point, I'm like, okay, that means I'm passing up on this five-star, four-star Furl and Mendy, who's got good stats, not great stats, but good stats, and is a lot of fun to use. I don't know if I necessarily need that. So for me, like where my team goes, and we will do a dream team episode after team of the year and after all the SBCs and moments cards and objectives and stuff are out, we'll do a this is what I'm working towards now kind of uh, team. But right now, off based off the leaks, 
I just want De Bruyne and Mbappe. I don't know how I'd fit them into my team. I, you know, I, like I could put Mbappe in at centre mid, he'd get eight chemistry because he'd link to Varane and Zola. I could put De Bruyne up front and he'd get eight chem because he'd link to Zola. Um, but I don't particularly want Zola. I would, I would rather David Villa. But if obviously Wayne Rooney does get a flashback card, if Ibrahimovic does get a flashback card, I'm now going to want those cards as well. So there's a lot to uh, take into consideration um, going forward through team of the year. The next comment we've got is from Tyler Davison. He says, is the League SBC method viable at the moment? Is there enough leagues to put, put to play the menus? The, the answer is yes. Uh, the League SBC method is very, 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 very viable, right? Um, by the way, just showing to Lazy Bar, see how I listed some of those for 700? I accidentally lifted one, listed one for 1,500 and it sold. Only one, but it sold for 1,500. Again, just 700 extra coins that I got because of a Lazy buyer. Always nice. Um the League SBC method is great. And what I like about the League SBC, which is also something what I hate about the League SBC right now, is the fact that it gives silver cards, silver packs, more silver packs than ever before, um, makes it relatively redundant to do bronze to silver upgrades, right? Because the the way that EA have killed the efficiency of the bronze to silver upgrades anyway, I wouldn't want to do, do them because they're hideous. But the fact that, you know, when you go to, for example, the championship, it is mostly silver packs, silver player packs or premium mixed players packs or electron player packs. You get so many silvers back from the minor leagues that you you just don't spend nearly as much money needing to do more silver packs and, and do silver upgrade packs because you're just constantly flooding your club with silver players when you do the league SBC. So on the one hand, the league SBCs have never even been, they, they're so much easier to do now because you get so many silver players and bronze players in return that you don't have to do as much with bronze packs and silver packs, um, which is great. It makes them easy. But in turn, EA have killed the efficiency and the profit margins from them because you don't get 86s and 87s or 85s or whatever anymore out of them. You only get 84s and 83s with, I think, one or two 85 rated cards. So the, the actual cards you get are way lower rated. Even though the card's stats are brilliant, the card number, the total value of the card, the overall is so much lower that it's it's very, very, very much more difficult to use them in SBCs and grinding SBCs. Uh, and then the second thing, of course, is like, for example, for Team of the Year, they've crucified the pack so harshly that it's like most of them aren't even really worth stacking. You know, I know some of you guys will probably pick a Team of the Year card out of uh, a, a mixed players pack that has, or even a small mixed players pack that has one rare, two golds, two silver, two bronzes. Someone's going to get a Team of the Year out of that. But ultimately, it's just, for me, it's not worth it. They've they've really, really dumbed down the efficiency, sorry, the profitability uh, levels of these, even though they've increased the efficiency levels of them. So for me, yes, you absolutely can run um league sbcs very easily very efficiently right now i just i just don't find it to be worth it which is probably another one of those reasons why i've spent less times in the menus this year because you're just not getting as much out of it in my personal opinion um alejandro says you should spam two rare gold player packs with the off league players so this is where a little bit of a conundrum is where i'm at uh, obviously we have a lot of players um if we just look at the golds that i have from what we would consider off league so um, off league would be anything that doesn't have a league SBC, right? So even French League Two, nothing going. Calcio B, nothing really. Bundesliga Two, we got some golds there, couple of pages of golds. Uh, La Liga Two, we got a couple, well, page of golds there. Uh, Danish League, some golds. Swedish League, one gold. Chilean League, probably a few, actually not that many. Even Chinese League, we could use. Norwegian League, there's a couple. Like obviously. Um, Dutch league, we would have loads uh, like the Argentinian league and the Greek league is good. I sold all my Greek league players though. Um, yeah, the, the Argentinian league is obviously really, really good. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the icon. how many icons I've got. That's crazy. Um, where the Russian league has some, the Mexican league has some. Yeah, I could spam and get some uh, upgrade packs. The, the point of contention that I'm at is number one, if I did a two-player upgrade pack, I'd have to turn in 11 golds, right? Even, even if we consider discard price for them at like 300 coins, it's like three and a half thousand coins, right? So three and a half thousand coins for two untradeable rare golds that I can only do one thing or another with, right? I could either reuse them in an SBC or discard them unless I pack something that's obviously playable with. So for three and a half thousand coins, that's what you get back. If instead I just discarded those cards, I would just have three and a half thousand coins. Now, if I just had three and a half thousand coins, 
uh, let's say I built 10, that's 35,000 coins. Let's say I built 100, that's 350,000 coins. Now, obviously, if out of those 100, I packed a team of the year, brilliant, I made bank. But if I don't pack anything of use, I've wasted 350,000 coins that could have gone towards another team of the year player. And then when you think about gold packs, now Frog taught me this this year, and it's, it's been a very valuable lesson and actually stopped me from opening two. And a, remember how many two-player packs I opened early on in this series? We actually probably have done about 300 to 400, maybe even 500 two-player packs. We have wasted millions of coins worth of content on two-player packs. I'd rather those coins right now, 100%. Even though I've got a couple of good cards out of them, I'd rather those coins. Um, what you can do instead is just open a 5K pack because what you're going to get, if, if, if the loss is three and a half thousand coins from a 5k pack you're never going to lose three and a half thousand coins you're mostly going to lose one to two thousand coins if you get a bad pack and then obviously you have the chance of getting a great pack and still packing something massive now we've not really packed anything particularly amazing here so this would be one of those packs where it's like look you're going to lose some coins on this although that juan jesus might be worth uh, a fair chunk um i don't know if the roma players are still selling for a lot i mean it's like a thousand coins for him um so you know we'll get a thousand coins back for him uh maybe six seven hundred coins back from the other card maybe 500 coins back from him so we're already looking at picking up two and a half thousand coins back from this pack and that that's going to be about it with some discards as well so maybe close to three thousand coins so yeah we've lost like two thousand coins at our chance of hitting something big instead of losing three thousand five hundred coins at a minimum and then not being able to do anything with them other than use them or not use them. You know, with the cards that we get now, we could save them and sell them later. We could put them into other SBCs. We get consumables that can make us coins back. Like, we can actually make true profit off of the 5K pack. So that's why I'd probably say I'm not going to go with the two-player pack upgrades. And then last but not least is Alan. Alan says, seeing his logic to not play foot champs as much this week and look to save up packs for draft, is he saving up packs and just playing because he has the coins to do so? Because I want to do something similar to him, but I have less than 100k to play draft, drafts because someone clarifies. So that is what I've been doing. I've just been playing the draft and saving the packs. Well, saving the big packs. But I have been opening the 5k and 7.5k packs that I've been getting through winning the draft. So I, I got three 50k packs and so three 5k packs. One set of 25s and seven and a half and one set of 25s and two fives so when i opened those ones i've actually been making most of my coins back i opened one of the 5k packs and got a hunter i opened one of the 5k packs got a fitness card a 1k coin unlock a cam to center mid card and an inform so just from those two packs alone it paid for 30 over thirty thousand coins earned back paid for two of the five drafts i i done so I'm opening the really small packs to help me get an influx of coins back. And of course, if you're winning the draft or if you're getting far in a draft, you are picking up a couple thousand match coins. I know some people like to think that the match coins don't make a difference, but they do because you don't have to put fitness on on or contracts in drafts. So the match coins that you get back are essentially like clean profit, if you like. Um, if you have 100,000 coins, if you're good enough, I'd say spend that 100,000 coins in draft. It, you, wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to get through them all before you run out of coins for team of the year. You know, you're, you're already looking at being able to do like six or seven drafts just off of the coins, let alone the coins that you'd make back from the small packs and the match earnings in the meantime. And don't be silly with it and just do drafts. Make sure you trade past four. Make sure you're clearing out your consumables, any players that you don't want. And if you don't have any consumables, if your club's empty, spend 20 or 30,000 coins on bronze packs and then list all of those items up. Make sure you've got a constant flow of coins coming in so that you never go back to ground zero and just have some packs left. So that is what I was doing. Um, and just in general with champs, as I say, like I know that there was a cost of coins for me to do, let's say just the five drafts, right? Just the five drafts cost me like what? Um, 75,000 coins, right? So I've paid 75,000 coins in to get five drafts done. I've got 200, what have I got? 350s. I've got 250,000 coins worth of packs saved. 350k packs, 225k packs, and two of the other 25k packs. And of the packs I opened from the other drafts, I, I I managed to get back at least 50,000 coins because I got 30,000 coins from the other the two of the 5k packs. So with the other 5k packs and the match coins, we're looking at at least 50,000 coins back. So for basically 25,000 coins total outlay, I've managed to put in 250,000 coins worth of packs in 20 games. Now, 20 games of FIFA would take me somewhere around the gold one, gold two mark. Um, and so that would be, you know, even if it's gold one, 200,000 coins worth of packs instead of 250,000 coins worth of packs, 
but obviously the, the coin va value of entering the draft is different. Um, and if we're looking at gold two or gold three, you're looking at 120,000 coins worth of packs in gold three. And uh, what is it? 130 or 140,000 coins worth of packs in gold two plus the coins that you get. What the, th the what is it? 35 and 45 and 30 or something like that. And then 50K from gold one. So there's definitely some debate, some debates to be made. The thing that kind of sways it for me towards draft is, is quite simply the fact that in draft, I get to use players that I just don't use otherwise. You know, I get to use Dennis Burkamp and Zinedine Zidane. I get to use, um, let's, I mean, let's build a draft. I get to use Crespo or Cristiano Ronaldo. And I know I can buy these players. Uh, I just don't. But um, I like the fact that I get to use Road to the Final Kante or Mark Overmars. You know, literally, look at that. Zidane straight up. He pops in straight away. Like these are cards that I just don't get to use otherwise. And the the state of the draft, it's just so much more enjoyable to play. It's so less threatening. Like, and I, I don't mean that in the sense that I'm threatened per se by champs, but until you get to you either get unlucky and match someone who's great, or you get um two or three really easy games up until towards the final, right? So, you know, for me, I know we have wax lyrical about draft very very deeply very very many times i'm sure you guys are getting very bored of the whole well here he goes again talking about draft but is it's ultimately true like the the draft is just such an enjoy a, a far more enjoyable experience for me personally um than uh, than anything else and so that's why i just like to indulge in it quite heavily because i i really really enjoy it we, we went back on stream yesterday and had a look at um my draft record last year at this time versus this year at this time um let me finish building this draft first though uh, we'll take edison there tomorrow guys whoa tomorrow this is going to be team of the year players i am excited um we really need him we'll take coolie bally for that rating for that chem style as well uh what do we got here we'll take an anchor very nice indeed yeah so basically this time last year uh, let's see if I can remember. This time last year, I had played 43 drafts and won 21 of them. Um, this time this year, of course, you guys know that is very, very different. But when we think about uh, the 43-21 split, let me just wait. So oh, I should have taken that Di Maria card. Never mind. Uh, we're rushing through it. And that's why I make mistakes when I rush through it. I'm not going to pick. Oh, maybe it wasn't a mistake after all. We end up getting Petit in there as well. Oh, my God. And Baracy. What a draft this is turning out to be. Um, let's pop Baracy in there. Let's pop Petit in there. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is all of a sudden a really, really nice draft. We actually might be closer. Yeah, we're at 190 already with two picks to go. And we've got Gelson Martins out there. I could actually start Paul Pogba. It would help me with chemistry. There we go. Paul Pogba goes out there. We'll take Gelson Martins off. Might get my first 191 here, guys, would you believe? Uh, we've got our first 190 on the road to glory as well. Let's get this pick. So we get Iago Aspas there. Oh, Raheem Sterling. That's even better. Uh, Sterling can go there. We still get the full chem. Um, and then we can put Pogba onto the bench. Is that going to be a 191? Not quite. So I'd have to do chem styles, which I'm not going to do. So I'm not going to pick the last pick right now. I just want to show you the difference. As I say, this time last year... Um, oh, can I not look at anything before I do it? Okay, I won't do the chem styles. If I lose, guys, re you, j just know. If I lose, it's your guys' fault, okay? Um, because I was doing something for the uh, for the video rather than for focusing on the actual um, draft itself. I actually might play Baracy at right back and pop Jimenez in at centre back. Um, we'll try and figure out a way to get a bit more chemistry on that if if at all possible. Um, swap those two over. Might might be worth playing De Bruyne in there. Maybe Salah over on that side there. There we go. That's our chemistry. So it is still only a one ninety, sadly. Um, but whoever the fastest is, 69, 70, 70. So we'll keep, we'll keep Bracey out there for the time being, um, just so that we can, uh, I can show you guys what I meant. And I will take an Italian manager. There we go. Perfect. So what a draft that is, by the way. Absolutely insane, 190. Hopefully I'm going to win that and get a couple more packs saved. But yeah, this time last year, 43 draft, literally on this day, on the 5th of January, 43 draft entries, 21 draft wins. This time this year, 136 draft entries this is the 136th and 78 draft wins so you it just goes to show just how much i'm enjoying this specific game mode because i am just living in it i'm i've never spent so much time in draft in all of my years playing fifa and it's because i get to build a team like that experience it over three or four games 
get a reward immediately at the end and just enjoy my time. And it's just so, so much better for me. But anyway, guys, this is going to be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rate and comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.